You've got questions. Well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Great to be with you again, Bob. So I have a fun question. Uh, it goes like this. My significant other and I cohabitate but aren't legally married. What sort of estate planning complications might arise? I've read that there might be some significant estate taxes to be paid when a non-spouse transfers assets. Uh, it's a great question. I, I would say estate taxes are probably very low on my list of potential issues here. Now, certainly being married does come with certain benefits, particularly for U.S. spouses, for instance. There's what's known as an unlimited marital deduction. So in theory, right, if, if one spouse dies and has $10 billion, they can leave that $10 billion to their surviving spouse and there's no estate taxes. But Bob, uh, last time I checked, most people don't have $10 billion. In fact, most people don't even have uh, you know, 13 or $14 million. You might say, where'd that number come from, Jeff? Do you just kind of pull that number out of the air? No, that's today's current estate tax exemption, at least at the federal level, which means whether you're married to someone or not, even if you're not married, you can pass more than $13 million today to anyone at your passing. Now, it is true that that's scheduled to revert to a lower number in 2026 if the law is not uh, extended, but even that will be about $7 million. Most people still will not have an issue there. So estate, ta estate taxes to me is probably one of the lowest potential concerns here. Not that it's unimportant, but it's just most people don't have to worry about it regardless. The bigger issues to, to me are all the other things that would normally default to a spouse. For instance, healthcare decisions, right? If you don't have documentation as to who should be making decisions on your behalf, if you are incapable of doing so, uh, whether physically or mentally, then oftentimes the courts will go to your next of kin. Your best friend or your partner of however many years is not your next of kin. And that's typically going to end up being a parent, a child, a sibling over just a quote unquote friend, at least what is legally on paper, just a friend. Doesn't matter how close that relationship is. Same thing if you need access to someone else's financial accounts. Again, if there's nothing on file instructing an institution to say, this is the special person who I have nominated to make these decisions for me, then it will default back to someone who perhaps you are not, you don't want to make those decisions. So getting documents such as a power of attorney in place, getting documents such as a healthcare proxy in place, to me are the bigger issues. And then finally, kind of along the same lines, you know, Bob, you mentioned and started off by talking about estate taxes. And if I leave assets to this non-spouse, well, my question is, how are the assets getting to that non-spouse? You know, a lot of people today are still intestate which means they don't have a will, right? If you don't have a will, my question is, how do your assets get from you when you pass to the person you intend? Most instances, if there's no will, you go to state intestacy laws. And just like these other things we talked about, state intestacy laws generally prioritize your closest living relatives to be your beneficiaries first. So if we summarize all of this, it's really a matter of, it's just more important for you to be proactive more than other individuals because the default plan for you that will be imposed by your particular jurisdiction, your state, your locality, will almost certainly not conform to your wishes otherwise. Yeah. So I've got one follow-up, which is you mentioned that they're unlikely to be subject to federal estate taxes. Mm -hmm. They may be subject to state estate taxes. Uh, certainly more, more likely in some states. Now, in about two-thirds of states, the answer is no, because about two-thirds of states don't have to deal with that. Uh, there is no state estate tax. In about a third of states, there is some state estate tax. And in many of those estates, excuse me, many of those states, the state estate tax is at a lower exemption than the federal. Some are equal uh, but there are some that are lower, perhaps, you know, closer to the $1 million mark and obviously much more likely to be above a million dollars of assets than above, let's say, $7 million of assets. But the majority of people still, even there at the state level, don't have to worry. Yes, it is more likely, but it's a, a, a greater number, but it's still a relatively small number. Yeah. 
Well, once again, you answered the question. It wasn't too taxing of a question, but I think you answered it. Well, I appreciate it. And we would like greater numbers of questions in our inbox. And you can do so by helping us out. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And we have no limit on the amount of questions you can ask. Thank you.